Welcome to the virtual presentation, Sexual Health Education in Saskatchewan High Schools, a survey of first-year university students. A study conducted by Danielle Schmidt, graduate student at the University of Regina in Saskatchewan, Canada, and Dr. June LeJou, professor at the University of Regina. Both are members of the Faculty of Kinesiology and Health Studies. This presentation was presented virtually at the inaugural International Conference on Health Wellness Society in 2013 in Brazil of this year. It was sponsored by Common Ground Publishing. Sexual health is an essential part of an individual's overall health status throughout their life. It is especially important for youth, as during this time period they are experiencing many changes, not only in their physical physique, but also in their emotional, mental, and spiritual self that will affect their sexual health. However, sexual health is a, often a topic not acknowledged among young people, only to be discussed when it is too late and a health issue has developed. Providing sexual health education, or SHE, part of the schooling process is a topic that has been widely studied, particularly in European countries, but there is limited research here in Saskatchewan. Sexual health education is vital to adolescent health, decreasing and preventing the incidence of teenage pregnancy, STIs, dating violence, and further promoting a healthy sexual lifestyle. Defining sexual health. According to the World Health Organization, sexual health is a state of physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being in relation to sexuality. The World Health Organization recognizes that sexual health requires sexual education that links an individual's values and behaviors with their thoughts and feelings. Sexual health also acknowledges the influence of culture, sexual preference, religion, age, disability, and socioeconomic factors have on sexuality. There is no international consensus on the concept or definition of sexual health because values and norms about sexuality often depend on many factors, including social, religion, science, medicine, and the individual experience. The World Health Organization also recognizes that for an individual to attain sexual health, all of their sexual rights must be protected, respected, and fulfilled. This includes the rights of freedom from sexual exploitation, oppression, and abuse. These rights also include the right to access to timely, broadly-based sexual health education. Why is sexual health education in schools so important? SHEA focuses on providing individuals and communities with information, motivation, and behavioral skills to not only avoid negative sexual health outcomes, such as STIs and teenage pregnancy, but they work towards helping individuals and communities enhance their sexual health, leading to positive health outcomes. The Public Health Agency of Canada explains the importance of sexual health education in the school setting, stating, since schools are the only formal educational institution to have meaningful and mandatory contact with nearly every young person, they are in a unique position to provide children, adolescents, and young adults with the knowledge, understanding, skills, and attitudes they will need to make an act upon decisions that promote sexual health throughout their entire lives. Sexual health education includes a multidimensional approach to learning that aims to achieve positive outcomes as well as avoid negative outcomes. Positive outcomes include intimate, caring, interpersonal relationships, positive self-image, self-worth, delaying first intercourse, and undesired pregnancy. Current challenges with the spectrum of sexual health and youth includes teenage pregnancy, high rates of sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, and dating violence. Less dramatized but also influential negative outcomes include feelings of exploitation, dissatisfaction, and guilt. These outcomes, positive and or negative, are influenced by education programs that foster an environment plausible to sexual health. So those are the major aims of sexual health education. Saskatchewan Statistics while there is a large body of literature in Canada on the topic of sexual health in young people, studies have been conducted at a national level or limited to a certain region or province, with research in Saskatchewan being very limited. This is troublesome because STI, or sexually transmitted infections, and teenage pregnancy rates in Saskatchewan are among the highest in the country. 2008 national statistics show that besides the territories and Manitoba, Saskatchewan has the greatest reported rates of both chlamydia and gonorrhea. In addition, 
Unplanned pregnancy is also an in Saskatchewan. While Stats Canada explains that there has been an overall decline in teenage pregnancy rates in the last quarter century, teenage pregnancy rates still tend to be higher in the north and in the prairie provinces. This includes Saskatchewan. The purpose of this research project was to first, explore first year university students' experience with the sexual health education he or she received during time spent in Saskatchewan high schools. Specifically, to assess if certain um, sexual health topics were addressed in their classes. And it also looked to explore if students felt their sexual health education needs were met through their high school curriculum. Results from this pilot study will assist in the development of a qualitative research study for a master's student's thesis. Participants. 51 students from a first year university kinesiology and health studies class from the University of Regina participated in the study. The study was completely voluntary and unanimous. Participants had the right to withdraw or skip a question at any time. The class was a 100 level first year health and development class. Of the 51 students who started the survey, 50 completed the entire survey, or 98%. Of that, 33 were females, while 18 were males. 80.4% of the respondents were 20 years of age or younger. Data collection. Using the online survey tool, SurveyMonkey, the participants completed a questionnaire with 45 multiple choice questions and two open-ended questions. The survey took approximately 30 minutes to fill out. Questions explored the participants' experiences and opinions on sexual health education in their high schools. It more specifically assessed if certain sexual health topics were addressed in their classes. The participants were then asked to rate these topics on their level of importance on a Likert scale. The two open-ended questions allowed participants to express comments that could not be mentioned through multiple choice, commenting on their overall Shea education. Participants could fill out the survey anywhere there was an internet connection. A link was provided through their university email. Findings. Findings from the study can be broken down into different categories. First, some demographics. Secondly, students' positive experience with sexual health education. Thirdly, students' negative experiences with sexual health education. And some interesting findings that need to be noted. Demographics. These demographics directly relate to the findings of the study, as each had the potential to influence the response of participants. First, 70.6% of participants attended a public high school, while 235 attended Catholic high school, and 5.9% attended private high school. In Saskatchewan, the Department of Education outlines standards of what shot within the curriculum of sexual health education, but this does de differ in delivery of programs depending on the high school district you attend. Secondly, 60.8% attended high school in the city. A city includes a population above 5,000 people. This matters because smaller towns in Saskatchewan often have less resources and information available concerning sexual health education. And lastly, 54% of students did not have a steady romantic relationship with someone in high school. Positive students' experiences. In the questionnaire, the participants were given possible topics that may or may not have been provided through their school sexual health education. They were asked to rate their experience with the topic. Of the 15 topics discussed within the survey, participants stated they were satisfied or felt that the topic was covered and did not feel they needed to learn more on several of the topics. These included the anatomy of the male and female body, sexually transmitted infections, so what are STIs, STIs, how does one contract STIs, and testing for STIs, also childbirth, abstinence, and drugs and alcohol, and how it influences one's sexual health decision making. Oppositely, a majority of participants had a negative experience with eight of the 15 topics. Within these topics, they felt that they either desired more information or that the topic was an unmet need. To explain this, um, when they desired more information, the topic was covered in class, but they felt that they needed to learn more or spend more time on the topic. If it fell under the category of an unmet need, it meant that the topic was not covered in class and they felt that they needed to learn about it. So these topics included, first, puberty and the normal growth and development cycle, healthy relationships, sexuality, 
so discovering who you are, including gay and bisexuality, safe sex, so contraception and birth control, teenage pregnancy, communicating with your partner and how to discuss sexual health decision making with your significant other, also HIV and hep HIV, AIDS, and hepatitis C education, and lastly, how to access and utilize health services and resources in the community. So these categories or topics all fell under an unmet need for the students or a topic that they desired more information for. Interesting findings. 88.2% of participants rated sexual health education in high schools as important to vitally important to their education. And only seven individuals rated sexual health education in high schools as either only somewhat important or not important at all. The previous slide showed data that reiterates the students feel she is very important part of their education. When participants were then asked to rate their overall sexual health education curriculum, only 33.3% rated their curriculum as good as excellent. Another 33.3 stated it as average, while 33.3% of the participants stated their curriculum as poor or even non-existent. This shows a discrepancy in the deliverance of sexual health education to our youth, as they have reiterated to us that it is important to their education. These findings were reiterated in the open-ended section of the survey, with participants commenting on their overall sexual health experiences. Many differing opinions were gathered about sexual health education in their high school. For example, one participant stated, at my school, it was a great experience and learning tool. While another individual suggested, I do not really remember the experience with sexual health in high school. Therefore, I don't think it impacted me or was taught in a way that was beneficial. The topic was kind of just talked about briefly and that was it. Another stated, I needed to connect more to the students instead of just learning about the curriculum. Significance. Saskatchewan is one of the leaders in sexually transmitted infections and teenage pregnancies in the country for young people. This study showed inconsistencies in students' experiences with satisfaction in certain areas of sexual health education and dissatisfaction in others. This study will have the potential to help direct future studies in Saskatchewan that can lead to curriculum and policy development in our schools for increased sexual health education for our youth. Recommendations for future research include assessing the difference between males and females and their experiences of sexual health education in Saskatchewan. Also, how much of a difference does the school district when attends affect high school students' experiences? So, experiences between public high school and public high school is one example. Also, comparing and contrasting results of this survey with individuals from a smaller town versus a larger city. Lastly, Saskatchewan teachers' experiences and opinions on the Shea curriculum, as they are the ones often teaching it in Saskatchewan. Thank you for listening. Any contact information is provided on the PowerPoint presentation.